time for another cooking with a message and I have a yummy one super yummy I don't know if you like deviled eggs or not but I love deviled eggs so that's what we're gonna make and before we even get going on our scripture I'm gonna get our eggs going and so I want to tell you how I do my eggs so I take the eggs fresh from the fridge and I put them in my saucepan and I'm gonna do about six eggs today. That's all, just six. Um, you can certainly do more, and because I don't measure anything on this recipe, but here's what I do. I take my saucepan with my eggs, my cold eggs, and I put cold water on them, cold. And I put enough water to cover, cold water to cover the eggs. Now, I know there's all kinds of people out there about different ways to do eggs but I found that if I just put the eggs straight into the pan and put cold water on them they don't crack when they boil have you ever had that where you put them in and they crack and then you've got that white stuff all over well this it doesn't happen as often or at all when you put cold eggs in with cold water and then put them on the stove so that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna stop for just a second put these on the stove get these up to a boil and these are gonna boil, once they come to a boil, about 15 minutes. And then once they're done boiling, then I stick the pan straight in the sink and I start running cold water. I don't drain the hot water. I don't drain the hot water. I leave the hot water in the pan. I put the pan in the sink and I start running cold water over the eggs. And it takes just a few minutes and they're ready to go. So I'm gonna get these going, I'll be right back. Okay, so what can we talk about in scripture that has to do with deviled eggs? Well, deviled eggs are really yummy, but they have some bitterness in them uh, because I put pickle juice in my deviled eggs. Sometimes people put uh, Dijon mustard or vinegar or blue cheese, something bitter in to counteract the flavor of the yolk. So I use pickle juice. So it's a little bit bitter, a little bit tart, um, but we're gonna talk about it. So I'm actually in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, it's in the Old Testament. It's after Psalms, after Isaiah. So I'm in Ezekiel chapter 28 and I'm starting on verse um, about verse 11 but I'm or no sorry verse 12 but I'm not reading all of verse 12 here's what it says you were the model of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty you were in Eden the garden of God every precious stone adorned you ruby topaz emerald chrysolite onyx jasper sapphire turquoise and beryl your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub. So I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God, and I expelled you, O guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. By your many sins and dishonest trade, you have desecrated your sanctuaries. So I made a fire come out from you, and it consumed you, and I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching. All the nations who knew you were appalled at you. You have come to a horrible end and will be no more. Do you know what that scripture is talking about? It's talking about the fall of Lucifer. Lucifer, the devil. So there's many people that did not know that the devil, or Lucifer, was actually an angel of God. Lucifer lived in heaven 
with God and was considered a guardian angel, was given extreme wisdom and extreme beauty. When we think of the devil, we don't think of beauty, do we? But extreme beauty and wisdom. And Lucifer liked how he looked, and he liked how wise he was, and he became proud, very proud. And it consumed him so much so that he was thrown out of heaven and down to earth. And when he came to earth, he brought other angels that were siding with Lucifer. Lucifer wanted to be like God. And it says in the Bible, it says God created the angels. God created Lucifer. God created Lucifer to be very wise and beautiful. But Lucifer took that beauty and that wisdom and he tried to use it for his own gain, his own idleness, I guess you would say. And that displeased God. So God said, you can't be here with us. And so he cast him down to earth. And then it says, because of the devil's beauty, because of the devil's beauty and the devil's wisdom, and because he uses it for corruption, he will be destroyed. And the nations will look upon him and be appalled by him. Now, it's really, really, really hard to think of the devil as being beautiful because we think of sin, and sin is so ugly and black and dark, and it brings us down. And so it's really hard to think of that the devil is beautiful. But God created him to be beautiful. Have we ever thought of something as a like a gift that God gives us and we don't use it for God's glory. We use it to build our own selves up. We take pride in our own selves, in something that we've done. It got me thinking about a bicyclist and I won't say his name because I don't want this to get, uh, he, he rode in the Tour de France. He ended up getting cancer. I don't know if you know who I'm talking about by just talking about those those things with him, but he won, he's won the Tour de France several times. Well, at first, he started praising God for his success. But then, for some reason, for some reason, he turned away from God and he started saying, it had nothing to do with God, it's all me. God did nothing. God did nothing, it's all me. I'm the one that does all the work. I'm the one that works out. I'm the one that does this. I'm the one that trains. God had nothing to do with it. Well, then he got cancer. And so everybody's like, oh, when he gets cancer, he'll turn back to God. Uh-uh, he didn't. He did not turn back to God. As a matter of fact, when he was ruled cancer-free, he said it had nothing to do with God. Don't say it had anything to do with God. It didn't have anything to do with God. It had, it had to do with me and me taking care of myself and my doctors, but it had nothing to do with God, so leave God out of it. So this man who had been with God, this, this bicyclist, famous bicyclist, known all over the world, praises God, and then the next minute takes it upon himself that it had nothing to do with God, it was all about me. That's kind of what the devil was. He forgot God created him to be this way, to be beautiful and to have great wisdom to help God, to help God with what God wanted him and needed him to do. And instead he took this beauty and this wisdom and tried to use it for his gain. And he still is today. Let me explain. The devil makes things look good. God entices, or the devil entices us to do things. He, he makes things look good. So then we do those things that look good, even though we know they're not good. The devil makes them 
look good or tells us it's okay. It won't get you in trouble. It's not that bad. And then we get in trouble and we realize we've been had. Sometimes that gets us in trouble. It usually does. If not now, then later. The devil uses his beauty and his wisdom to get to us. God created him, but not for what he's doing. He was supposed to be an angel of God, to serve God, to help God with us. But instead, Lucifer turned it to help himself to bring glory and honor to, his, to, his, to himself. But instead, he's turning people away from him and he's trying to turn people away from God. That's his goal. He does not want you to be with God. He wants you to turn away. That's his goal. That's his joy. That's what brings him happiness, is turning us away. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would keep our hearts and our minds focused on you. These things that bring us misery and sin, help us to focus on you. Set our minds back right with you so that we may be your servants. Amen. Okay, I'm going to get things ready to do our deviled eggs. My eggs are boiling. I can hear them in the background. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. My eggs are boiled. They're in the sink. I've got cold water running out over them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and peel them. So what I do is I take and crack them and then I roll it. And then they just peel really slick and easy. And there we go, it's already peeled. Now what I do is I stick it back in the saucepan with the water and that washes off all the extra shells that might be in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these cracked and I'll be right back. Okay, I got them all cracked, so now what I'm gonna do is and I'm just keeping them in the cold water to continue to cool them off all the way through. So now I use a sharp knife and I slice it in half the long way. And then I just use my knife and I kind of pinch the egg a little bit and the yolk just falls out. Now I'm putting the yolks on a dinner plate because I'm not doing very many eggs. I'm only doing six eggs. So you will have 12 halves which is a lot when you think about it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get all of these cut and all the yolks out, and then I'll bring you back and you can see what I do with the yolks. Okay, so I got all the egg yolks in my bowl. So what I did was I took a fork and I just mashed the egg yolks, so now they're just like crumbles. So I need this, I'm gonna set my egg whites off on the side and I do this completely by taste, completely by taste. So I actually have several spoons so I can taste test and because it's all by taste. So I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper because you have to have it. And of course, the more I'm not measuring, notice I didn't measure anything. So now I'm just gonna stir in the salt and the pepper. So now I'm gonna add about one teaspoon of pickle juice, and I'm using dill pickle juice. And you don't wanna add too much, but sometimes it, this is why you use your taste, because once you add in your mayonnaise and your mustard, you may go, mm, it needs something else, and it's usually the pickle juice. Okay, so now I'm gonna add in just a small spoonful of mayo. Just start small, you can always add more later. You don't wanna overdo it. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit, if I can get it to come out, there we go. A little squirt of mustard. And then I'm just gonna stir. Now, how do you know your consistency? Well, you don't want it runny, you don't want it soupy, but you don't want it so thick that you, it's like uh, the thickest mashed potatoes in the world. You don't really want that, but you don't want it, you want it smooth, you want it creamy. That's the best way to say it. 
and it's just about there. I'm actually going to add just a teeny tiny bit more mayonnaise. And I, when I said teeny tiny bit, I mean teeny tiny bit. Okay, so, because the mayo is what gives it the creaminess. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to taste test this and see what I think. needs pickle juice. So I'm going to add just a little bit of pickle juice and I'm going to mix that in and then I'm going to taste test it again. And you're going to want to have several spoons. Don't use the same spoon because that's gross. Okay so I've got a different spoon and I'm just going to taste it again. There we go. It's ready to go simple as that. Okay, so now you could, you could take your spoon or your fork or whatever you've got and just put it into your little eggs, but how fun is that? Not at all. So what I use, some people use a piping bag, I use a Ziploc bag. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take my egg yolk mixture and I'm just going to put it into my Ziploc bag. Get it all, all the goodness out of here. Kind of brush it off. I don't know if you like a, uh, deviled eggs or not, but huh, I love them. Okay, so now I'm going to get the air out as much as I can and I'm going to go ahead and seal the bag. Then I'm going to take the corner, just the tip and I'm gonna cut it off. Now you have a piping bag. Okay, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna pull my eggs over here, and then, I don't know if you can see this, but then what I do is I just, and it fills them up so fast. Look at this, woo! I'm filling eggs just like that, super fast, and it's like cute. Super cute. And then if you get down, you just take your bag and you just squeeze it down. And I still have a little bit in my bowl and I might need it to fill these up. Well, I might be okay. I've got three left. And then, so we have mayonnaise, mustard, pickle juice, salt and pepper, and then our last ingredient, and of course eggs. And then our last ingredient is not really for flavor, it's for pretty. It's for prettiness, and that is paprika. Now, my dad does not like paprika. He says he can taste it. I don't really taste it, but when I make potato salad, I put, um, I put boiled eggs and I slice them. I just, I have like a egg slicer and I put an egg in my egg slicer and it just puts them in little slices. And I decorate the top of my potato salad with these sliced eggs and then I sprinkle paprika over the top. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got my eggs here and I'm just going to lightly, if I can get it to come out, it comes out kind of fast so you have to be careful. And there you go. So there's the deviled eggs. Yum. That's all there is to it. You give them a try. I love deviled eggs. Have a great one. Bye.